this is problem number 25 from section 4.2. Um, the key to finding all of these uh, items of the local extrema, the intervals of, inter of in increasing and decreasing, the key is to start with the derivative because the derivative can tell us where it's increasing and decreasing, and we look at the zeros to determine the local extrema. So let's start by taking the derivative of h. Of course, the derivative of h is h prime. Uh, looks like we're going to do quotient rule. Uh, which is going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. And that's all over the bottom squared. Uh, let's clean this up by doing the distribution. I get negative x squared minus 4. Uh, these double negatives make a positive, so I get a plus uh, 2x squared on top. Again, all over uh, x squared plus 4 quantity squared, uh, giving me x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 4 quantity squared. Now, as I look through this derivative and try to determine uh, where the critical points may be, I ask, are there any values of x that are going to make the denominator 0? No, if I, if I um, square 2, I get 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. I don't think there's any zeros here. I think this, this expression on the bottom is always positive. Well, we're, we're going to restrict ourselves to the real numbers, if you don't mind, Edwin. Right? You are, you are right. 2i is a, we'll make it 0, but we're not going to deal with complex numbers today. Okay, what about the top? Are there any values of x that are going to make the top? Zero. Two and negative two. All right? And those are the locations of the critical points. Now, if I do my little number line thing, and here I'm saying I'm dealing with h primes, and I'm going to ask about the sign, the S-I-G-N, of h prime on these intervals. When h, sorry, when x is really big and negative, which is another way of saying where it's really small. What kind of values do we get out of h prime? Put, a put negative 10 in here. Negative 10 squared is 100, 100 minus 4, positive 96. We already said the bottom is always positive. I think we're getting positive numbers in that interval. Let's put 0 into that derivative. Negative on top, always positive on the bottom. Let's put positive 10 in that derivative. Okay. So going to part B, our intervals of increasing are going to be from negative infinity to negative 2 union positive 2 to infinity. Now that's the answer that's in the book. And it has closed... Uh, interval notation at 2 and negative 2. And we'll go back in a few seconds about why that those are closed. The interval of decreasing is from negative 2 to 2. And that only leaves the question, where are the local extrema? Going back up to here, if I am increasing and then decreasing, that means there is a local max at x equal negative 2. And that there's a local min at x equal 2. Because at x... Uh, I'm decreasing, and then I increase again, so that's got to be the location of a local, uh, a local min. Why do you, why does the book have ordered pairs for the local max and the min? Why do you always teach it without ordered pairs? Okay. Let me, okay. The language that I use was that there's a local min at, right? Okay. If I wanted to 
make the statement, if I really want to answer the question, where, what, are the local, what are the local extrema, that I would say the local max is, and then I would plug in my x value. Well, the book uses at and has another pair. One, one of them. You have to go back to look at the local one. maximum at negative 2, comma, 1, 4. See, I, I find that language, I find that language uh, incorrect. Okay. Um, and maybe it's just simply because this is the leftover remnants of the my old calculus, where, calculus book where they tended to make the distinction that the x values are a location and that the local, if I put negative 2 in here real quickly, 2 over 6? 8. 2 over 8. Um, one quarter. I mean, I like, I like, I, I say where the location is, I use the word at. The local max is one quarter, meaning the, the highest that ever gets there yeah. is one quarter. But, you know, at negative two comma one quarter, I can live with that. And, you know, I mean, these are professors of mathematics and they know more than I do. But I just, I, I don't like that language. I don't. No, no. That's what I'm saying. It's okay. I just have, I have old ways that are dying hard. Okay. And of course, they would, they would say at two comma, it's probably at negative one quarter. Yeah. So, I guess what we'll do is we'll move toward their language. Do they let me use the right multiplier on my pages? But they do, well, the only thing they don't want you to do is to say, the local, the local min is two. They don't want you to say that. They don't want you to just leave the x values. You know, but if you, um, if you mimic the language from the book, you'll be, you'll be fine in the eyes of the uh, AP graders. Okay, so there's number 25. All right, so let me finish, close that recording off, and then let's go back and talk about this uh, closed interval notation problem.